Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeffrey, I'm the CTO for ITQ, a VMware partner in Europe. On this personal channel, I create video content around technology in the VMware ecosystem. In today's video, we are going to use the ESXi installation USB drive that we created in the previous video. We're going to use it to do the base installation of ESXi on the Supermicro Super Server that I displayed in the first video. Now we're going to use the IPMI interface to, uh, to do remote control. So we can boot up the physical server, deploy ESXi and prepare the physical ESXi server for nested virtualization. Let's go. Now this will be a very straightforward installation using the USB drive we created. So we're booting the ESXi installer. You need to make sure that you select the right destination disk. So I'm speeding up the process a bit here. Uh, there's already an ESXi deployment uh, on this disk, so I'm overriding it. Yes, I'm sure. Press 11. And remove the USB drive and enter to reboot. Now, once the server is rebooted, we need to do the initial configuration. Press F2, put in your password. Now, first thing is to configure the management network. So just to double check, we're using only the connected VMNIC zero. So the physical network interface of my super micro server. When I'm not using VLANs in my home network, so I'm leaving this blank. And it's getting an IP address on my home network, which is 192.168.2. And I'm using uh, 35 as the IP address. The gateway will eventually change um, when we have our top of rack in place. We need to set up DNS. So that will be eventually my domain controller. Um, I will also need to change that afterward. Hostname is esxi.homelab.local. And I always like to correct the, uh, the DNS suffix. So homelab.local would be my DNS domain. Now, since this is a home lab environment, I also like to change uh, some of the troubleshooting settings. So enable the ESXi shell and enable SSH. This will make it a bit more easy for us to do troubleshooting and remote into the uh, server. That's it. Now we can uh, go to the ESXi management console uh, using a web browser and finish up the configuration. Okay guys, with the base installation done, let's log on to the ESXi management console, do the initial configuration using my username and password. Now, as you can see, we're running version 7.0 update 3. And let's take a first look at the data stores. So this is the, the SSD that I brought over from my previous home lab configuration. So there's still a bunch of virtual machines in here. We're not going to touch any of them in terms of taking you guys through the entire process of the reinstallation. So instead of installing ESXi onto the USB drive, I installed it to the NVMe drive. And the remaining capacity was now to create a VMFS data store. Now I'm going to rename it it. I like to call it SSD 960 because it's a, a Samsung 960 Pro SSD in there so it's easy recognizable. It's a bit faster than my SSD 850 uh, which is also in the um, but this uh, this kind of gives me a good overview. So one of the first things we need to do is create a, another virtual switch. So this standard virtual switch will only be used to connect my entire um, nested home lab to. So I'm going to make sure to use a MTU size of 9000 bytes uh, because we need a larger MTU size for the NSX deployment, which we'll do later on, where we need the additional uh, headroom in the uh, in the MTU to accommodate the Geneve overlay traffic. We're not going to connect a uplink, so this will be a, a standard virtual switch with no uplinks. We need to accept promiscuous mode, we need to accept MAC address changes, and we need to accept forged transmits. So on the nested E6i switch, this is where we need to create a port group. So let's uh, do networking, port groups, and add a new port group. Now this is the port group for nested ESXi. Now this is the bit of magic that we are going to use. We are going to use VLAN ID 4095. By using this VLAN ID, it will support VLAN trunking 
on top of this single port group. So 4095, let's make sure to select our nested E6i switch and we need to accept again Promiskey's mode, uh, MAC address changes and force transmits. Now we have our nested ESXi port group. I also want to add our ESXi management port group. I'm using VLAN 10 uh, for this specific port group and I can inherit these uh, from the vSwitch. Now one of the things we need to do is now deploy our ESXi virtual machines. William Lamb has created a very, very extensive section on his blog around nested virtualization. So there's a ton of information here, which I highly recommend you to check out. But what we're now looking for is the, the OVAs. So William has created uh, ESXi virtual appliance OVAs, which we can simply download and use to deploy a fully configured virtual ESXi server to our home lab. So let's make sure to download this. Now let's wait for this download to complete and then we can deploy our first ESXi server. Now with the networking site prepared, let's deploy our ESXi server using an OVA file. So I'm going to name this ESXi01. Select the OVA we just downloaded from William's website. Now this is important. My SSD 960 data store is backed by my uh, NVMe 960 Pro drive by Samsung, which is significantly faster than the SATA based uh, 850 SSD. So make sure to select your fastest um, data store. Agree the end user license and let's make sure to select our nested ESXi port group. And I'm going to thin provision my entire home lab. Power on automatically is fine. Networking. This will be ESXi01.homelab.com local. I'm going to use the network 10.0.101.10.101. So 10, I will use VLAN ID 10 for my management network. And I will start naming my ESXi servers starting from 101. Netmask is a slash 24 or 255, 255.255.255.0. 10.0.10.254 will be the default gateway. VLAN ID uh, will be 10. So VLAN ID 10. So we make sure that we tag the traffic using this VLAN ID, uh, which will be transported on my nested ESXi port group, which supports VLAN trunking due to the use of VLAN ID 4095. My DNS server will be 192.168.2.36, which will also eventually be my, uh, my DNS server and my Active Directory controller and homelab.local will be my DNS domain. We will also use the same domain controller as an NTP server. I will leave syslog open for now, configure a password and let's enable follow hardware MAC address so we can clone these, uh, these ESXi servers, which makes it a bit faster to deploy them. All right, let's click finish. Okay guys, the ESXi server has been deployed. I already made some changes before I hit the recording button. Um, so let's walk through the virtual hardware settings of this ESXi server. Now I'm providing my nested ESXi service with two CPUs, uh, 38 gigs of RAM. I'm not doing any reservations or limits or shares. I will let the, uh, the ESXi scheduler take care of this. The hard disk number one is the hard disk where the operating system, so the hypervisor will be installed. And disks two and three will be used by vSAN eventually. So I did increase the size because I want to have a bigger uh, vSAN data store in the end. So this is for my flash tier and this is for my capacity tier. As you can see, they're now both uh, thin provisioned and they are uh, both located on the on the 960 NVMe drive. Um, once everything's complete and I have vCenter up and running, I will probably storage vMotion the capacity drives to my secondary storage tier because I have a bit more uh, disk space there. So again, no limits, no shares. Uh, we're using the para virtualized uh, VMware driver for the SCSI controller to get the most performance out of this setup. And we're using the VMXNet3 um, VMXNet3 adapter 
again for the best networking performance. Uh, I need to connect the network adapters to my nested ESXi port group. Remember, this is the ESXi port group where we have VLAN trunking enabled by using VLAN ID 4095. Um, in the installation of ESXi, when we go to the network settings, I can there assign the VLAN ID. So the VLAN tagging will be done by the hypervisor on top of the, um, um, on top of the management kernel. And let's give this a couple of minutes to, uh, to boot up. And we're going to repeat this installation process for ESXi host 2 and 3. I'm running a three node vSAN cluster as a home lab. Now this ESXi server is now booted. Let's um, press F2 so we can set up the initial network settings. So we go to, just to verify, we're using VMNIC 0 at this point. Later, this will all be migrated to a distributed virtual switch. Um, I'm using VLAN ID 10, which is the VLAN of my management network. I'm going to give it a static IP address, 255.255.255.0. Oh. And the gateway will be eventually 10.0.10.254. This is not up and running yet, uh, but we'll make this uh, this gateway available. So my DNS server is 192.168.2.36. The 192.168.2.0 uh, slash 24 network, that's actually the physical network of my uh, of my home network. So my ISP router is connected uh, to, of course, my ISP provider. And on my home network, I have this subnet allocated. So my uh, DNS server, which will also be uh, my Active Directory controller and also be my Windows jump host that will have one interface on my physical network, on my home network. So make sure we have fully qualified domain names here for the host name. Now, since this is a home lab environment, I always like to um, also enable the ESXi shell and enable the SSH shell so we can remote in. I've already configured these settings feel free to um, to set these settings to your liking. So that's it, 10.0.10.101. Now we can yet reach this uh, this IP address because we have no routing in place from my physical network to my, uh, so from my home network into this VLAN 10. We need to set up some routing, which we will eventually do in a, uh, in a top of rack kind of appliance where we will run VIOETs. That's something for uh, for the next video. Let's repeat this process for the other two uh, ESXi hosts, and we'll give them uh, one, 102 and 103 aesthetic IP addresses, both again in the same subnet. So I repeated these steps and I deployed two additional ESXi uh, servers. So we now have three VMs running, each uh, with ESXi installed already and configured. Now, maybe before we move forward, maybe it's a good idea to give our uh, port group some, some better names because these might be a bit confusing. So let's first take a look at the uh, switches. So this is uh, vSwitch 0. So this is the, the virtual switch with, which is actually connected using a physical uplink into my home network. So it holds the management VM kernel for my physical ESXi server, and it holds a virtual machine port group. Now let's give these some better identifiable names. So this is my home network. This is the physical ESXi management. Now let's hop over to the nested ESXi switch. As you can see, this is a internal only uh, vSwitch. So there are no physical adapters connected here. So let's rename nested ESXi. Let's call this a trunk port because the VLAN ID 4095 makes sure that this is a, a trunk port and we can do VLAN tagging on the guest OSs. Again, Promiskis mode, MAC address changes and forge transmits are all enabled and let's rename this to nested ESXi management. So VLAN 10, 
So as you can imagine, if I want to install my vCenter server, for example, I need I can put that on this specific port group. So it will be in VLAN 10, which is the same ESXi management network where also my virtual ESXi servers are connected to. So if I go now to one of my ESXi servers, you might recall that we have VLAN 10 configured here. So this is to ensure that all my ESXi management traffic on VLAN 10 is actually in the same VLAN. I think now it's time to deploy our supporting infrastructure services, which in essence would be a Active Directory controller, a DNS server, NTP, and so on. Now, I'm not going to cover these steps in this video. I want to keep it focused on the VMware side of things. So just go ahead and deploy your domain controller uh, like, you, uh, like you would normally. And we'll pick up this video once I have my domain controller up and running again. Um, I will put my domain controller uh, on my home network. So 192.168.2.0 24. So it will function as a jump host between my home network and my home lab environment. We'll pick it up right after I've deployed and configured my domain controller. All right, I've deployed my domain controller. I just wanted to show you some of the settings that I use for my domain controller. Because I'm also using it as a jump host, I want to make sure that I'm giving it uh, plenty of resources. So I've configured it with two CPUs, eight gigs of RAM and a 200 gig TIM provisioned uh, hard disk. I've connected it to my home network uh, port group. So this is on the virtual switch, which is physically connected to my home network. There is a virtual machine port group there. I'm connecting it there. So it will be part of my home network and it will consume an IP address uh, from my home network. So in my case, 192.168.2.36. Now I already made some configuration on it. So it's already hosting uh, Active Directory. It's a primary domain controller. It has DNS configured and that's basically it. In the next video, we will configure our top of rack router. I'm going to use a Vios appliance and I will make sure that I can route from my VLAN 10 into my home network so we can take our next steps. Because in our current setup, our domain controller is on my home network and my ESXi servers are now connected on a VLAN 10. So we need to make sure that we can route between these networks. That will be the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification button and hopefully see you next time. Thanks for watching.